welcome uh, to tonight's college and career ready night. Um, this is the particular session that is focusing on District 214's government, public safety, and law enforcement pathway. Um, before we begin, I would just like to um, inform all of you that this session is being recorded and we will be posting it to a YouTube channel that does get um, a lot of visits um, as people are looking King over, over courses. Course. There we go. And um, so just wanted to make you aware of that. Additionally, if you would like to request translation services for this particular um, call, you can go into the chat right now on Zoom and just ask for your translation services. And our host will send you instructions on how uh, you can get that translation services. So with that being said, um, I'd like to go ahead and, and just jump right into it. We have 45 minutes. We want to um, explore all that 214 has to offer in the government, public safety, and law enforcement pathway. And to do that, we are very uh, grateful to be joined by a group of people. We have industry and community partners um, who work with our district and work with our students. We have district instructor uh, who teaches these courses, who will be here to explain some of the important courses that go along with this pathway. And also very importantly, we have two of our 214 students who are currently involved in this pathway, um, who not only have taken and are taking our courses, but have also taken advantage of some of the external experiences that go along with uh, this pathway. Um, so to start with, I'm going to ask our panelists just to briefly uh, introduce themselves so you can get a sense of, of the different voices that you'll be hearing from tonight. Then I will take an opportunity to show you some of the different uh, pathways and the different courses that uh, we offer. Then I will turn it back over to all of our, our panelists and they will explain a little bit more about their careers, um, what kinds of things that uh, they entail, what kinds of things it takes to um, move into those careers. Um, and and so forth. Uh, there also will be some time for questions. If you have questions throughout, you can put them into the chat and we have a host who's monitoring the chat and you uh, hopefully will have time to respond to those. So with that being said, um, if I could turn it over to, in order um, of our panelists on the list here, if you could introduce yourself uh, with our opening questions. Sure, my name is John Grossman. I'm a firefighter paramedic with the Village of Arlington Heights Fire Department. Um, I got my I'm a Hersey graduate, and after Hersey, I, gra I went to Eastern Kentucky University, where I got my undergrad in fire and safety engineering technology, and I came back uh, home and started uh, my career at Prosper Heights Fire Department as a volunteer part-time to get me into Arlington Heights as a full-time firefighter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grossman. Very good. Hi, my name is Tony Peluso. I am with the Rolling Meadows Police Department, where I am a commander. I'm in charge of the patrol division, which is all the uniform officers out in the squad cars. Um, I've been a police officer for 27 years. Um, I had my associate's degree when I started in my career, and along the way, I've gotten a bachelor's and master's degree and completed both of those online in uh, public safety. Thank you, Commander Peluso. Hi, I'm Molly Talkington. I'm also with the City Rolling Meadows. I'm the finance director, so I get to work with police and fire along with other core services of the city. Uh, Commander Peluso can tell you I love to talk budget and numbers, and my career started in finance with a history degree. So uh, <laughs> you can come to public administration in different ways. So finance um, it was one way, or you know, history is public administration. I went to Whitewater and got my master's at Northern Illinois. Um, and I've been in the career for over 20 years, and I'm currently enjoying my time at Rolling Meadows. Thank you very much, Ms. Talkington. Hi, my name is Mike McCabe. I am currently teaching at Buffalo Grove High School uh, World History and Legal Studies courses. This is year 21 for me at Buffalo Grove, 26 total uh, for my career. Uh, I actually was a former uh, Percy Husky, too. Um, I won't tell you the year uh, to let you know how old I am. Um, but uh, I did get my undergrad at Winona State University. Um, I have uh, three master's degrees through Aurora um, University and also through Concordia um, 
love teaching the law pathway, uh, hopefully answering some questions later on in this discussion for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCabe. Hi there. My name is Connor Martin. I'm a junior at John Hersey High School. Um, and at Hersey, I participate in the law team alongside taking law classes, including American law, civil law, and constitutional law. Um, and outside of school, through the D214 interns pathway, I had the wonderful opportunity of getting an internship with state rep of the 54th District of Illinois, Mary Beth Canty, um, where I completed 60 hours of internship work in, um, and completed numerous different tasks um, with Rep Canty's office. Great. Thank you, Connor. We look forward to hearing a little bit more about that later on. And last but not least. Hi, good evening. So I'm a senior at Vailing High School. My name is Macaulay Glova. I'm also taking law classes. And outside of school, I've completed three different uh, internships. One was in CBP, Customs and Border Protection. Another one was uh, as part of the SLAM program with Vailing Police Department. And another one was with Mount Prospect Police Department. Great. That's that's great. Thank you so much, Mikola. Again, we also look forward to hearing a little bit more about that and those experiences. Um, so let me briefly just show you how our core, our, our career pathways are organized. Um, we're going to be focusing on four different pathways tonight. The first one here is the government and public administration. Um, so students who are interested in, in moving into working in government, um, you will see that along the uh, left column there, you have your core graduation requirements with English, mathematics, social science, science, career and technical education, fine arts, consumer ed, and physical education. So all students in order to uh, earn a, grad, uh, a high school diploma will need to take those and it shows you on the right side there the uh, graduation requirements. The very top row where it says government and public administration, those are some of the suggested course sequences of, of the different electives that you could take if you're interested in pursuing a career in government and public administration. So there's courses like AP psychology, uh, constitutional law, criminal and civil law, AP government. And then we also have a capstone course called college legal research and argument um, and advanced legal concepts, which is a dual credit class with Eastern Illinois University. Um, if you look under the column that says post-secondary, there are other electives. Those are just you know, some that they selected um, but certainly a, a student who's interested in government and public administration would find many of these other electives relevant as well. And there is room to take additional electives um, that are connected to your career field. Uh, below the, the related electives, you'll see that there are career related activities for government and public administration pathways. Um, and then below that, it has, in general, the four-year university admission requirement. So that's the, the first one for government and public administration. Um, Mr. McCabe will be speaking a little bit further about those law courses in a moment, um, especially those uh, college dual credit courses. Um, international relations is also connected to government relations or government um, uh, career fields. Similar courses, we but we can broad, broad uh, excuse me broaden it out to some more global types of uh, social science courses as you can see with Latin American studies, human geography, AP African American studies, AP European history, Middle Eastern politics, um, and so forth. And again, there's additional electives under the post secondary column. There, there's career related activities, um, and and so forth. Next, we'll move into emergency and fire management services. For this pathway, you can see that the red elective suggestions are more in the science realm. Um, and so they're recommending that you will start with the introduction to healthcare field um, where they really do just that. They introduce you to a whole variety of different careers in um, healthcare, which would include paramedics, which is a, a really vital um, component of uh, fire services. Um, then there's also an, a more advanced uh, elective called medical terminology. AP psychology is another one of those courses since people in emergency and fire management services are working, you know, closely with the public under very stressful circumstances. Um, and they themselves 
encounter many very stressful circumstances. And so that's considered to be a valuable elective. Then students who are pursuing this pathway can elect to take a, a course at Harper, which is called College Introduction to Fire Science. That's one semester. And then there's a second semester at Harper called College Fire Behavior and Combustion. And so really that is letting allows, allowing students to get a, a head start on going through um, that certification process with those college level courses in it. If it will not only give you a head start, but it maybe would help you to determine if that in fact is the pathway uh, that you want. Um, there also are internship opportunities in this career pathway uh, where in addition to those courses at Harper, you could be on the field um, and, you know, getting those experiences that way. Criminal justice is the last career pathway that I'll highlight here. Um, and this pathway, you'll see in the red row, uh, suggests uh, maybe moving, not so much in the healthcare field, which is what the fire science was, but more back into the law career with our introductory American law course, the constitutional and criminal civil law course, AP Psychology, also working very closely with the public uh, under stressful circumstances. Um, and then the um, Harper course, Introduction to Criminal Justice, which is a semester course at Harper, and the Introduction to Corrections, which is a semester course at Harper. Um, students who are interested in criminal justice would also potentially be interested in our dual credit class that's hosted at the schools, um, having to do with legal research um, and argument as well. Um, so those are the uh, path, pathways as described in what we call our Academic Pathways and Programs Guidebook. This guidebook is found on the District 214 webpage. You can see that first top yellow arrow um, pointing to the, if you go to our very first homepage, you click on Academics, and then under Academics, you click on that second arrow that says um, Academic Programs Pathways Guidebook. Um, and it's again, it's just a guide because students pursuing any of these careers can take a different combination of courses um, and extracurriculars um, and internships. Um, this is just a suggestion showing you the different opportunities that exist. So with that being said, um, at this point, I would like to turn it over to our industry partners, um, and they're going to share a little bit more uh, with you about things like their typical day, what that might look like. Um, what kind of training is necessary to obtain a job in the field that they work, um, how you as a high school student can begin to prepare for a career in that field, um, and or um, some of their best advice to a high school student that might be interested in pursuing a career in that field. Um, so with that, we'll go in the same order that we did in our introduction. So if we could start with uh, Mr. Grossman. Sure. Uh, a typical day in a fire service, uh, it's a weird career. We don't work nine to five. We are a 24 hour shift uh, career, summer 48 hours. So we start at eight o'clock in the morning and we don't get off shift until eight o'clock the morning the next day. Uh, so we have to work three days a week, two, two. Uh, we have to work holidays, weekends. Um, so that's how our schedule is set up. Uh, but you know your whole schedule for the whole year. But typical day for us is we start off, uh, what rigs are we at, what our duties are for today with our at our station, uh, and figure out our day with training, uh, equipment checkouts, vehicle checkouts, uh, and going on emergency calls. Uh, as we talked about the emergency medical service, we're about 80% of our calls are EMS now. Uh, the fire service has changed the last 40 years. It's now more EMS driven than fire driven due to technology and prevention education. Uh, for training, uh, each department's different. Um, it's been changing because we're hiring so many. Uh, some departments require you to have basic firefighter uh, certification, paramedic or EMTB certification, uh, college credit, military experience. Um, here at Arlington Heights, we don't require any of those requirements except a high school education, but we don't know where the departments could go into two, four, six years when you have the ability to start testing uh, for the fire service. Uh, but once you get into the fire service, you can take a bunch of different classes, being paramedic, uh, fire engineer, you can get in different specialty teams, be an instructor, and work your way up through the promotional process as well, being a line officer or going to administration. 
Uh, the best thing for her is our students. Follow your career path, but you have time. You can't start testing for the fire service until you're about 20, 21 years old. So you have time. Graduate from high school, go off to college, get a degree in what you want to. Um, or if you want to go down the fire science path at Harper, what's great with that is you can transfer to Western Illinois, Southern Illinois fire science programs. You can go where I went at Eastern Kentucky and all your classes transfer. Um, so you can get your degree in that, or you can get your degree in business, education, finance, law enforcement. We have all those people that work at our fire department. They all have different backgrounds. Um, so you don't have to just be fire science degree to get into the fire service. And my best advice is be a good student, be a good person. Um, just like we're law enforcement partners, we do background checks. So we want to know, if, were you good in school? Were you good in college? Uh, when you move back home or worked at other jobs, were you a good employee? Because we want to hire good people um, for this career. Great. Mr. Grossman, thank you very much. Um, we will go ahead and, and, and go through all of our panelists and then um, hopefully have time if, if there are some questions. So go ahead and put those questions in the chat. If you have them, if you want to direct them to a, a specific panelist, great. If you want to keep them a little bit more general and open-ended, we can uh, funnel them to the correct person. Um, we'll move on to Commander uh, Peluso. Okay. So a typical day in the life of a police officer is different from firefighters. However, we, we kind of we end up in the same places a lot of the times. Um you don your gear in the beginning of the day, which is your vest and your your belt and everything else that goes on. And you sit in a roll call where supervisors give you assignments for the day, uh, whether that is to paying, paying attention to a certain area or certain people. Uh, you head out in your squad car and you respond to 911 calls. And while everything is considered important in nature, not everything is emergency is emergent and we deal with people in a wide variety of situations. Um, so we have to be adaptable and we have to be able to understand that people are contacting us for help and rarely on a good day. It's usually when things are going bad. So you have to be able to be patient and be understanding. That's a very important part of our job. Um, our job can be physical at times. Uh, there are some people who, who choose to be getting physical with us, but uh, often it, it is verbal and uh, that's where I can, I can transition into training. Degrees are great. Uh, there's nothing wrong with degrees. Going to college, a degree is never going to hurt you. Um, but life experience is most important. And your ability to communicate with people is the most important thing I can stress as part of this job. You have to be able to communicate verbally and you have to be able to communicate in the written form. What a lot of people don't realize is with every activity we do, there's a bunch of written work that goes with it. Um, written work becomes very important for us. Um, so that's where your degree will not hurt you. Um, to prepare for a career in law enforcement, it, we have a wide wide variety of degree requirements too, just like Firefighter Grossman said. And for the city of Rolling Meadows, we just changed our requirements to a high school diploma as well. Um, most important for us is to have somebody who not only has a clean background, but somebody who has a good dose of common sense. And we can usually sniff that out in an interview process. And as we get to know applicants, that's most important to us is somebody to just be able to communicate effectively with people and reach out to people of all different walks of life. Um, so the best advice I can give to you as you as you pursue a career in law enforcement is to keep a broad variety of work experience as you approach this career. Um, the more people you can deal with in a more variety, wider variety of situations, the more beneficial that will be and that will help you in a career in law enforcement because your ability to communicate is the best thing you have. Great. Commander Palusto, thank you very much. Um, we'll move on to Ms. Talkington. Okay. So finance is a little different, you think. I think a lot of people, when I say I'm a finance director, they're like, you're an accountant. And so half of my year, yeah, I probably spend more in the accounting world, right? We do an annual audit where I like to say we look backwards and we tie to the penny. But I really love the budget world, which is part of like the other half of the year where we look forward, we round to the thousands, and I get to work with all these other departments. So um, they sound fairly routine, but they're not. Um, I got to learn a lot about fire shifts and fire trucks one budget year because that was a big need for us. Another year, we um, were in the recession, and I got to learn about police staffing and why we needed to keep six officers and what proactive policing meant. 
So there's a lot of interactions with finance with the internal departments. Um, and that's more the um, internal facing. We also at Rolling Meadows have external facing where we do utility billing and we run actually the garbage uh, company for the city. So we have people at the front where you come pay your bills. You have water, sewer, wastewater. We work on how do we you know, structure those rates? Are we, you know, treating those kind of and those things as like a business, right? We're making enough money through the rates to pay for the services we're providing. Um, so it, it's a lot of good experience. You got to know a lot about numbers, um, but you don't have to do it in your head. Excel is my favorite. So don't, <laughs> I'm always the person someone asked at dinner, like, can you split the bill? I'm like, I use Excel. I don't do this in my head. So use your tools, but, um, you know, it's a lot of fun because it sounds like it's routine. I say I do audit, I do budget, but really it depends on what's happening that year. I can learn a lot more about different departments and have kind of different focuses each year. So that's really what finance is about for me. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Talkington. Uh, we'll now move on to Mr. McCabe, a teacher at Buffalo Grove High School. All right. Thank you. Well, I am fortunate enough to have taught in the uh, Law Pathway for the last six years, uh, currently teaching uh, two classes in the Law Pathway. The introductory course is American Law and Criminal Civil Law. American Law, just like it sounds, overview of the American legal system. Criminal Civil Law, again, just like it sounds, half the class dedicated to the study of criminal law, criminal trial, uh, civil law for the second quarter. We also have a constitutional law, and that is going to deal with uh, larger constitutional issues, Supreme Court cases, and then we have a class uh, that the students can transition to uh, advanced legal concepts, which is going to be more focused on uh, components of the law. For example, one of the things they're doing in that class right now is looking at the Supreme Court. Uh, they were having a big discussion. Is it better to have fewer justices, more justices, the pros and cons uh, of those discussions? Um, and then finally, the dual credit offering with this pathway kind of culminates in college legal research and writing. And this is a class that's really going to stress um, the essentials of speaking and writing skills. This is also, um, like we mentioned before, through Eastern Illinois University, this credit is given as a college credit. I do want to stress for any parents out there that are looking at enrolling their students in these classes that these are all semester offerings, so it wouldn't be a full year commitment. A lot of times we have students that will double up within the year. One of the uh, kind of really different pieces we have with this program, we do bring in a lot of guest speakers. Um, this year alone, I've had uh, members of local law enforcement come in, speak with our students when we were talking about um, criminal law issues. We have uh, attorneys that specialize in certain areas of the law. I'm doing a family law unit right now. I have a family law uh, an attorney who specializes in family law coming in with the next couple of weeks here into the class to speak to the kids concerning that. Um, also, too, uh, last week was the week of field trips. We actually take a lot of field trips in this program. Uh, we were at Dirksen Federal Courthouse uh, last Wednesday, and uh, very interesting. The Mike Madigan trial was going on there, so it was a little bit crowded in the courtrooms, kind of hard to get in a few of them. Um, and then we also do uh, several field trips to Rolling Meadows Courthouse as well. Uh, a lot of times the judges will break off, talk to the students. Um, we, we get tours of the back room sometimes, and the students seem to have a lot of fun with those field trips. They always come back and talk to other students about what they saw in that, uh, you know, that courtroom at that particular time. So, um, yeah, it is a, a very fun class to teach, and I, I think the students have a, a terrific experience meeting actual people in the field and witnessing law as it happens in an actual courtroom. Um, the other thing that we have, too, as a component with this is we do have mock trial teams at every school in the district. So every school does have a competitive mock trial team, um, always trying to get more students. I coach the one at Buffalo Grove High School, and this is something where we have the students through the Illinois State Bar Association presenting uh, actual cases, and sometimes in front of judges, attorneys, um, one coming up in February at uh, the Rolling Meadows Courthouse where they actually get to present in the actual courtrooms to a um, you know, state judge. And, and this is like, like a fantastic opportunity. A lot of times the kids are really uh, scared about this, but when they do it, they say, you know, this is fantastic, and they get really good feedback from the judges, from the attorneys. So really happy about this program. And uh, again, if you do have any questions, uh, as we go through, well, please throw those in the chat. Thank you.
All right. Thank you, Mr. McCabe. Uh, we'll now turn to our students, uh, interns, and also former students or current students of some of our courses. So we'll start with Connor. Go ahead, Connor. So um, at Hersey, just to start off, I've taken three separate legal pathway classes. So I started with American law, um, which is just like a, a basic um, kind of introductory course to the law pathway that introduces um, foundational concepts of like the constitution um, and just other like overarching um, law concepts that I moved on to criminal and civil law, which explored uh, more intricate details of the, the criminal justice system, due process, and also um, the second quarter of constitutional law, which talked about um, obviously just the intricacies of the bill of rights um, and all aspects of the constitution. And then, Currently, I am taking um, the second quarter of constitutional law, um, where I am, again, exploring the um, ideas of the Constitution and um, kind of what that entails. Alongside taking these classes, I also participate in law and mock trial team, um, kind of like what um, are the teacher also talked about earlier is that we have um it, it's really just a, a great opportunity to like go a little more in depth than the classes um what i mean by about that is we have a, a lawyer um kind of coach come in and talk to us about the um the um what in what it entails to actually be a lawyer and then we kind of implement that into our mock trial proceedings we face off against other teams um, we have these competitions that are um, really in depth and are attempt to, they attempt to simulate what a real court proceeding would be like. Uh, we even bring in real judges um, for this court proceeding. And it's really um, overall, it's a very eye-opening experience to be a part of something like that. It, I would say it, it takes the law classes I participated a step further, and it kind of gives you um, an opening into like I'd say about as close as being like a real lawyer as you could get outside of going to law school and actually um, stepping up there and being a lawyer. Um, and also outside of this, I was very fortunate to get the opportunity to work for state rep Mary Beth Canty. This past summer, um, I completed 60 hours um, with her office, which is two um, internship semesters um, under the office, I completed multiple tasks, including canvassing, which is knocking on doors. I completed a um, legal research project in which I proposed a bill and presented it to Rep. Canty alongside um, research work cited. And I also made um, canvassing calls and um, also campaigning calls in which I talked to constituents, asked them about needs. And then I also worked a little bit on the campaign side um, where I did some uh, campaign work, including preparing for the July 4th parade um, for her office. And I um, taking this internship really broadened my perspective about the law, um, just the law world in general, because up to that point, I'd only taken law classes that would have propelled me into you know, law school and working in the criminal justice system or being a civil lawyer, but working in the, the government side, working with constituents, you know, um, working for a, a state representative is really just a whole different world. It's completely separate from the courts. It's, you know, the process of making laws, campaigning. It's, it's really just an entirely different um, section of, of, of work. And like, had I not taken that internship, I would have not seen that side of the legal world at all. Um, because while you have to have um, the, the same, many of the same qualifications to be a lawyer as a state representative, um, obviously lawyers have to ha go to law school. And I, I believe almost all state reps, if not all of them, have to have uh, a law background or a law degree that the, the um, Differences between the two fields are just worlds apart. Um, you really can't compare them. And just taking that internship really helped me understand um, the opportunities I would be afforded to if I were to get a law degree um, and what careers I would be open to. Um, and so just having that 
opportunity to have an internship at D two fourteen, I feel like is really unique. I don't know if other districts have that, but just having that extra experience on top of taking classes has been um, really influential to my um, hope of eventually attending law school and going into the government field. Great. Thank you so much, Connor. Um, and then we'll move over to Mercola, who has also had an internship and it was in a completely different field. And we look forward to for hearing about your experiences. So Mercola. Okay, so my pathway in high school is kind of similar to what Connor said. I've also taken criminal law, American law, and I'm taking constitutional law right now. I will be also taking the dual credit class next semester with Eastern Illinois. But outside of school, I completed three different internships with law enforcement. So the first one was at Customs and Border Protection, and it was like a part of the Explorer program. So it was very interesting because most of the times with these scenarios, like actual scenarios of what happens uh, like in real life so we did a lot of handcuffing negotiations and like uh, <clears throat> just how to talk to people in different situations and it was all like from the side how cbp does it so how the federal enforcement agency does it and another internship i completed was uh, as a part of the summer program summer slam program with film police department so it was just some fun uh, and also a lot of uh, connections, uh, building connections with uh, police officers who work for the police department. And we went to the Northwestern Police Department and also Chicago PD. So it was just a lot of like making connections with different people, different different police departments. And last internship that I completed two weeks ago, I completed it with Mount Prospect PD. And it was uh, mostly patrol investigations, also a little bit of uh, front desk so it was also different and uh, it was just very interesting seeing how like this whole policing works inside also riding along with different police officers it was very helpful and just like seeing how they interpret the laws how they make their decisions about what to do in each scenario because each scenario on the street is very different and uh, it was just really interesting to see and also like uh, it was very different from CBP because it was uh, in the local level. So they was kind of like similar, but uh, just because it's law enforcement, but actually they were different. So just District 214 provided me with this amazing opportunity to see different uh, pathways in law enforcement, even though it's still law enforcement, but it's still very different. So I'm just, re I'm just really grateful that I was able to do it. Thank you. Nicola, where did you do your internship for the Customs and Border? Was that at the airport? It was uh, uh, the Rosemont office and also in Chicago office. Okay. Great. Unfortunately, we didn't go to the airport. Um, so let me direct a follow up question first to our first, first to our student interns. Based on those internship experiences, and Nicola, we'll start with you. Um, did that help you better decide what you'd like to pursue? Did it confirm what you were thinking you wanted it to do? Did it kind of give you more options? Did it help you confirm not to go down a certain pathway? Um, what, where did you land with that? Okay, so I always wanted to do patrol. This was my initial goal. So I was always thinking about doing just patrol and I have never thought about like any other options, but uh, during my internship with Mount Prospect, I was also introduced to investigations and working with the detectives. So right now I was thinking about going into patrol and then maybe transferring into investigations. Okay, great. Same question to you, Connor. So I would say um, taking the internship opportunity with Rep Canty really just broadened my um, uh, pers perspective um, job hopes. Initially, um, after taking multiple law classes and being involved in law team, I was almost certain that I just wanted to be a lawyer, um, you know, whether that be in the, the criminal side or the civil side. But after um, taking the opportunity with Rep Canty and seeing um, how involved and, and how intricate such a job can be um, and just how many people you get to work with, um, how much like amazing work uh, and the, the diversity of the work you get to do is re really interesting. I loved every part of uh, the, the job. I love talking to people. I love um, writing up my um, legal research report. So it really just kind of broaden my view of what I think I could, you know, do. I could now see myself as going in and being a lawyer. I could see myself doing um, 
anything in the, the government field, whether that be for the federal government or for um, a state representative. So it really just broadened my view. Great. Thank you, Connor. Um, at this point, any of our audience members, if you do have a question for any of the panelists, uh, feel free to add that to the chat right now. Um, and we do have a few more mo moments. We will go till about 7.45. So uh, there's a good opportunity here. If you have a question, while we're waiting to see if anybody does, I would maybe just open it up to the panelists now that you've heard um, everybody else speak. The, I don't know if our students have some questions for any of our industry partners or teacher, or if any of our industry partners have any questions for our students. Um, you guys all had really great con uh, contributions. So I'll go ahead and open it up to anyone uh, on the panel. Hi, can I stress that I think there's a difference in going into government versus private sector. I think people come into government because we wanna make a difference. We wanna be part of a community. Um, we're seeing kind of a greater good, right? Versus the private sector, I see it as working to make a profit. So I, I think there's kind of a different um, belief in getting into government as a career. I also, for females, right? Finance for females. Um, women hold a lot more finance director roles within the government than they do in the private sector. And I think I've been able to have a much higher, better career tra trajectory by being within the government. And, um, you know, having that that pathway open to me as a female has been very beneficial as well, being in a government sector versus a private sector. Okay. Um, Mrs. Talkington, I know when we study political science and there's a lot of study about how there's a lot of um, people who go back and forth between the private sector and the public sector at times. Um, do you think that that is also an opportunity or um, for people to consider? It is. I have been pretty successful in prior jobs where you hire for skills and you look at what people bring to the table. So I was able to bring someone into a financial analyst role in the government that had previously worked for a bank and had done taxes for banking, which sounds like it'd be very similar to taxes for government, but we're kind of on the opposite ends, right? We're developing the tax that will be paid versus, you know, calculating what needs to be paid. So it's kind of two sides of that coin. But when you identify someone with those skills and the ability to learn, um, it, it's really helpful. So I've been successful bringing people in from the private sector into the government. Great. Um, we have about three minutes remaining. So I might uh, just go ahead and ask uh, if uh, Commander Peluso and Mr. Grossman, Mr. McCabe, if you have any final thoughts or words. Uh, one, one thing, oh, go ahead, John. Oh, well, uh, the big thing for us and myself and the commander would say is if you're looking to get into the fire service or law enforcement, reach out to your local community or police and fire department. Uh, we're always, our doors are open. If you wanna come in, do a ride along, uh, observe what we do, get in an internship program. Uh, it's a great way to see what we do um, and what our day-to-day -day jobs are and responsibilities are. So reach out to your uh, local fire and police department and see what we do and come see, uh, enjoy the fun. Mr. Grossman, um, do you ha currently have interns or how often does your department have interns and what does that look like? We just started our internship uh, this past summer. We had one intern. Um, and our job was more just with the schedule because we work the 24 hour shift. We wanted to enjoy an eight hour shift with us. Um, but we did hands on where they go on the fire rig, go on calls. Um, our student went on ambulance calls, went to the hospital, saw how that all operates, was involved mm -hmm. in a fire investigation with me, um, service calls, public education, but also spent time with our administration to see not only what we do day to day from the line side, but also the administration side to do with the budgeting from the finance side of what it costs to buy a fire engine, to pay for tools and equipment, salaries, training, EMS equipment and training with that areas, public education. So our student got a whole, the whole world of the fire service mm -hmm. in their 60 hours. And that was a high school, a, a, a active high school student or during the summer or when was that? Uh, active high school uh, student. Great. And now he's there, uh, still at Prospect and also doing the fire science program at Harper. Great. Uh, Commander Peluso? 
Uh, one thing I might add is some of these classes and experiences you have as you're young might benefit you later on when you might not expect it. Um, when I was a teenager, I worked in a pharmacy. I was a pharmacy technician, and I didn't think that would ever help me in law enforcement, but it actually did. I remembered a lot of the classifications of different medications and how those might affect people, and I think that would be more beneficial to a paramedic, but it was actually benefited me quite a lot. I was very surprised by that. And then some of the math classes that I took in high school and college that I never thought I would use, um, I ended up using as a traffic crash reconstructionist later on in my career. Uh, that's all math when you're trying to figure out how fast cars were going when they hit each other. Um, I never thought I would use those things, but you never know where they might pop up later in life. So as they may not seem beneficial to you now, but they just might be. Great. Thank you. And I'll turn it finally over here to Mr. McCabe, if you have any final thoughts. Well, I just I just wanted to uh, give a big thanks to our community partners. Uh, this doesn't happen without you to bring people in that have the professional experience, the background. There's only so much we can do in the classroom and to uh, bring it all together, real life, you know, people from the field. Um, this is what makes the program. Also wanted to thank our two student speakers that are on tonight. Um, I, I know this is not easy for students to come on to a forum like this with a bunch of adults and, and you know, put yourself out there and talk about your experiences. But, you know, this is all part of the Pathway program. Uh, you know, the the confidence they show, you know, the the background they get, the knowledge and everything else, this is all due to the cooperative effort. And um, yeah, it's it's fantastic to uh, work within this program. Well, thank you, Mr. McCabe. You so eloquently did what I was just going to do and to thank all of our panelists um, for, for joining us and thank them for their, their partnership. Thank our students for going out on a limb and, and sharing their experience with others that will really help them as they're making their decisions. Um, and thank you all of you for joining us. Um, I hope this was helpful, uh, and we look forward to seeing all of you um, in our courses, in our programs, in our internships, and out in our community. Uh, so that wraps us up for the evening. Um, thank you very much, and have a good night.